Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I want to show you how to get a Angular 7 project set up in AWS Cloud9 uh, using uh, EC2 uh, instances set up in around about five minutes. Now the video is probably going to take a little longer than that because I want to make sure that you're aware of what we're doing as we go through. But once you're aware of all of this stuff, you will be able to set these environments up in uh, less than five minutes and you will not have to think about it. It's literally just a case of going through, um, for the most part, going through a wizard and then uh, installing NPM and a few other things, which I will provide the commands for in the description below, as well as a blog entry that I created uh, for setting, setting this environment up. So I'm going to preface this quickly by saying if you are new to AWS, you need to be aware that billing is handled a fair bit. You know, it's different. It's not like a fixed amount per month. It depends on your usage. It depends on what you're actually setting up. I haven't seen my billing go above $3 a month. And I use AWS pretty heavily for development purposes. I generally have a couple, you know, good couple of environments. I have um, many EC2 instances. I've got some database instances. I've got a um, source control instance on AWS as well. And again, I'm not seeing it go much above three dollars. You can check your billing in real time. So I do suggest you do that. You know, every Every couple of days, look at it just to make sure that it's in line with your expectations. And the other thing is start small, okay? AWS is not the same as bare metal uh, computers. It's a cloud offering, it's elastic. Use what you need to use, and when you suddenly need to use more, uh, increase, you know, increase your um, EC2 instance increase how much space you need on your EC2 instance. So attach a volume to it or whatever. Um, don't, you know, don't go for the biggest and best to start with because it's just going to end up costing you more money. So I'm currently on the AWS Cloud9 homepage, but you'll probably end up needing to go to service up here uh, after you've signed in. So make sure that you've you know, signed in as well. Uh, type in Cloud9. Click here, and you will end up on this page. This is a very useful page. There's a lot of getting started guides, some resources, uh, trying to sell you on the benefits, which I'm probably going to do anyway, because I truly do believe that AWS is very useful for all kinds of developers, from people that just want to dabble in computing, people that are just starting out, so college level students, university level students, uh, even in some cases, children with enough setup, kid you not, this is this is so much simpler than your usual, you know, bare metal computer setup, you know, setting up an environment for that. So I've rambled on enough, let's go ahead and create ourselves an environment and get this environment started. So I did say that the, the video would take a little longer. Uh, that's because I'm rambling and kind of just making sure you're aware of what we're actually doing. Okay, so you're going to get this this front this front end here. You're going to get a little wizard. It's going to ask you for a name for your environment. Put whatever you like there. It doesn't really seem uh, that important. But description, if you like, I never bother. Again, keep with the principle of keeping you know, starting small and increasing when you need to do so. I've not really had that many issues with, with the T2 uh, micro instance. It doesn't have that much assigned to it, but uh, for my needs, it's generally been okay. I think there's a few times I've had to go up a couple. Also note that if you are going to, if you are going to want an upgrade on here, there are many other things that you can get here. So you can get different levels of compute power with different numbers of virtual CPUs, different amounts of RAM. You can get some real beastie um, instances here. But again, as I said, start small and just pick what you need. You know, just, just use what you need uh, and that will keep your costs down. And again, when I say cost, we're not, we're not talking about a sizable amount of money. We are talking most likely cents as opposed to dollars. 
pence as opposed to pounds. Keep this as the default, unless you've got a real reason to change this. Um, don't, don't bother changing that at all. Go to next step. This just gives you a review. Nothing really to see here. There are a few things that we'll talk about as we wait for the environment to create. So the first thing is unlike your computer that you're using right now, you shouldn't have to care about EC2 instances. They should be disposable. That means that data on the EC2 instances should be backed up, should be in source control. So you need to, if you're going to use this for a real project, a project of any level of, um, you know, sort of worth or value to you, whatever that value might be, make sure that you back it up some way, make sure that you use source control. Uh, there is a code commit for, for AWS. That's very good. I use it. it. It does the job. It takes about five minutes to set up. And I don't think I've actually been charged for using uh, code commit at all, despite the fact that most of my code is actually on that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to switch to my blog. And uh, you're not going to be able to see this. It will be in the links. And I'm just going to copy and paste the commands that you need to run uh, on the terminal. Now, some people might think this is cheating, but I don't think it is. I think that, you know, you've got that resource that you can use. You copy and paste uh, the commands. It installs NPM, uh, updates yum for you, all of that stuff. And, and at the end of it, you get a running Angular application. And while this is loading, you know, we can talk about some of the other benefits that I personally have found uh, using this approach to coding. So because it's on the cloud, one of the one of the biggest differences I've found is I'm able to code pretty much wherever I go. I'm able to use my Chromebook, which has very little uh, compute resources at all, and I'm able to write enterprise level applications no problem. It doesn't matter what computer I've got, so long as I've got an internet connection and a compatible browser, which I always do. It also means that I don't have to mess around with source control when I'm essentially using the source control just because I've got to log on to a different computer or whatever. I'm able to go into the same environment no matter what computer I am using, which means I could use a Mac to develop, I could use Chrome OS, which I do, I could use Windows and so on and so forth. And it really doesn't matter as long as you get a compatible browser. Uh, so that's one, of the, that's one of the big benefits. The other benefit is one of the things that AWS Cloud9 actually offers. And what that is, is the ability to pair program. Now, I can't say that I've done this uh, at sort of any serious level, but you, you are able to kind of allow people to connect to your environment, chat with them over a text-based sort of chat, very much like Skype. But the other thing is you can both work on the same environment on the same files at the same time. So you can pass control uh, to each other. And, and to me, that's very beneficial, especially if you're stuck and, you know, you're looking for help and you know a friend and, you know, you just give them give them the details. They log in, they, you know, start helping you and you, you get a very collaborative environment in that way. Likewise, I can see this being very useful within the workplace as well rather than sort of having to come over to someone's uh, desk all the time or having to talk over the phone or whatever, um, you can just log on to that environment and take control uh, and, and fix the problem, no problem. Now I understand that this isn't, you know, this isn't sort of groundbreaking stuff and that actually this has been done for a lot, you know, a lot longer than I've been alive, but to me, AWS just makes that kind of thing very easy, and I like that it offers uh, that benefit. The other thing that I like about AWS is the fact that it's got a lot of documentation. Now, I will say that um, in actuality, the documentation can be somewhat hard to find just due to the fact that there are so many things that you can actually do with AWS, but uh, it is there, and if you look hard enough for it, you will find it. There are document, there's documentation on how to set up different environments, um, documentation on you know troubleshooting and issues that you might find. If you want to go for paying for the support, the support you know from what I've heard is pretty good. I've not actually used it myself, 
But uh, maybe maybe I'll do that later on down the line when I get more serious with with what I'm doing and trying trying out some things that I'm not too familiar with. Um, yeah, so a lot of benefit, I think. I think there's you know there's a lot of benefit to doing this sort of thing, and not as I say, not just to professionals, but even to people starting out because you don't have to deal with the complexities of setting up an environment. And for me, that's a big win. Um, especially when I get people asking me, oh, how do I start coding? How, you know, how do I, how do I start doing all of this stuff? And one of my answers now is, you know, try AWS out and, you know, let me set it up for you. Let me get an account for you and you, you can give it a go and I can help you and I can collaborate with you, which I find very useful. Okay. The only thing I'm going to do here, which is somewhat specific to AWS is, uh, the way we serve our application like so. Um, you will get a uh, warning about doing this, but don't worry about that. That's uh, that's fine. Uh, npm run start. Oops. Let's try that again. Npm run start. You see that we get the we get all of this running. You see that you get uh, a few warnings here because it's just you know getting getting something up to have a play about with. Don't worry about it for now. It just seems like you need it in order to be able to use this preview functionality. There might be a better way, but I've yet to find it. So preview, preview running app, and hopefully what we should get, or what we will get even, is our application, uh, like so. The other thing you can do is you can copy and paste this as well, uh, and paste that into into a new tab and you'll get a full page, you know, kind of preview of your application, which I find very useful because it frees up the users, you know, your space up here as well, which is good. Okay, so the other thing that this stuff offers with, you know, no other configuration, which shouldn't be a really a surprise because it's not really Amazon Web Service offering this, but like you'd expect within an Angular application, if you change the, uh, let's say, if we change the HTML here to, to this, whoops, and save that, and then go to our go to our example. We should see this all reloading, so you can see this recompiling and, and all of this updating as expected. Now, in a separate video, I'll probably uh, well, I will be demonstrating on how to act, uh, activate sort of Jasmine and Karma uh, test runner in here because it doesn't seem to work. It's got something to do with the um, with the headless Chrome in here, it doesn't seem to play very nicely unless you do a little bit of tweaking to it. It's not that difficult to do, well worth doing because me personally, I like my test-driven development. So it was very important that I was able to get testing working on the on in this project from the get-go. So yeah, that'll probably be one of my next videos. So anyway, um, yes, this video is taking a little longer than five minutes, but I hope you can see that setting up an environment like this it does, it, you know, it should take you at less than five minutes. If you're if you're using things like code commit or Git, you should be able to see and hopefully see the benefit of, of all of this. There are a few downsides, you know, you're gonna have to learn a new IDE, new key bindings, but you you know, you do have the ability to swap key bindings over to Emacs and Vim. So if you're comfortable with that, you know, you you could do that. And some people will find a, a massive benefit to having those key binds, I'm sure. You can change the theme as well to sort of a dark base theme if that's your if that's your thing. Um, I, I, I don't mind either way, although I, I suppose I do gravitate towards the dark theme. So yeah, you can do all of that. All of the things that you'd expect to do, code completion, formatting, you know, it's all there, it's ready to go. Um, obviously those things do differ between languages. So there's there's more support for some languages than others. Generally, the more popular the language it, it that, that there is or you're using. So if you're using something like Java, um, PHP or, um, well, TypeScript, JavaScript, you're going to find that there's more support than, say, for Haskell, for instance, which, uh, which that you know, there isn't as much support for. But, yeah, I, I personally think that this is great. There's so much you can do with it. This is only, this is barely, this isn't even scratching the surface of AWS. There are so many things that you can pick up. Lambdas, for one, are really useful. Um, really interesting kind of serverless architecture that, that could be useful, but that, that that's not what that's not what this video is about. I could probably ramble on about AWS for ages. I think it's great.
please let me know what you think in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, found it useful or interesting, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you've got a better way of doing this or if there's some, some other setup of environment or an environment that you'd like to see in Cloud9 um, and you can't figure out how to do it, which would be surprising because there's a lot of documentation out there. Hats off to the AWS people. Um, but if you can't seem to get it working, put something in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to try and get it working for you and release a video around that. So once again, thank you very much for listening to me, listening to me ramble. Thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you in another video soon.